while cultural coronation of leaders in different communities has been a feature of politics in Kenya for many years, as leaders such as the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Mutui, seek the blessings of their regions, many wonder why it's so important for them to be the face and voice of their tribes. And in a country with a predominantly youthful population, how relevant are these rituals to young Kenyans? One young Kenyan, eh, relatively, uh, NTV's Melita Ole Tengas, explores the relationship between culture and uh, politics. I'd like to invite you to do share your thoughts once you see the feature using the handles on Twitter at NTV Kenya. Mine is at Obaros, and uh, the hashtag is NTV Weekend Edition. Here we go. Before and during the colonial era, different communities identified with their supreme cultural leader. For instance, Kuitalel Arab Samoe of the Nandi, Mekatilili Wamenza of the Giriyama, Oloibon Lenana of the Maasai, among others. These cultural leaders also led their communities to either resist or collaborate with the British colonialists. <laughs> This practice of appointing a supreme leader of a community has been common after independence. The anointed one first embraces and identifies himself with the culture of his people and with, and with an eye on elections. It helps them to solidify votes from their regions and avoid division in their community. <laughs> anaenda kuwakilisha community yake kwa sababu ya ushujaa wake si kwa sababu ya udogo wa mwili au nini kwa sababu za qualities ambazo anazo in the current political space this has given politicians a lifeline of sorts every 5 years when their term comes to an end they consult their tribesmen on matters politics and culture <laughs> In most communities, council of elders decide on a leader to carry the community's leadership mantle. But more often than not, their decision is met with resistance and harsh criticism. The word rijuo, as it is, haraijuo, that is very primitive and archaic. Why should any leader of sound mind uh, think of that? <laughs> The build-up to 2022 elections and President Uhuru Kenyatta's succession has seen politicians seeking blessings from elders in their communities. The most recent politician to embark on this quest is National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi, who was anointed as the Mount Kenya spokesperson by the Agikuyu elders in Mukure Wanyagadanga Shrine today. The origin of the Agikuyu people. Politics is about uh, social development, uh, civilization, and all about infrastructure, all about schools, all about Medicare, all about roads, all about um, uh, institutional development. Now, when you go to, uh, to, 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 to rituals, not all ceremonies, however, go as planned. In January this year, Kanu Chairperson Gideon Moy was turned away by a group of youth who blocked him from attending an installation ceremony at Kapsisiwo. Claiming the Kalenjin community already had a spokesperson, Deputy President William Ruto. After 20 days, however, Moi was installed as the Kalenjin kingpin in an event characterized by traditional cleansing and anointing rituals. It has been taken as a commercial um, activity. And I think I said earlier, it, it's a contest, a contest between political parties, a contest between interest of party A and party B. So in my view, it has diverted from its original meaning. This, however, creates a clash within the Kalenjin community, as Deputy President William Ruto had been coronated Kalenjin kingpin by yet another faction of the Talai elders in June 2020. <laughs> Late last year, Governor Joseph Olelenku was installed as the new Maasai spokesperson to replace the late William Olentimama. 
thus giving him powers to negotiate the interest of the mass speaking communities ahead of the upcoming elections. In Luhia land, the issue of the region's spokesperson is still a hot potato. Supremacy battles have been witnessed among top leaders from the community, including ANC party leader Musalia Mudavadi, Ford Kenya's Moses Wetangula, Devolution CS Eugene Wamalwa, and Kakamega Governor Wycliffe Oparanya. <laughs> Mudavadi was, however, installed as Luya community spokesperson. In the coastal region, Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho was coronated in January 2020, making him the Muslim political leader. <laughs> The post that was the first of its kind by the Muslim community is meant to back Joho in his 2022 presidential bid. <laughs> While there were plans to endorse Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi as Gusi spokesperson, the CS insisted that he has to consult the president on the matter. No public coronation has been held yet. Former Gatanga MP Peter Kenneth met Kikuyu elders in Nyeri late last year in what he termed as a spiritual day. While the politicians are busy courting the elders to be the mouthpiece of their communities ahead of the elections, the majority of voters are young and not many are deeply rooted in their culture. People aged 35 years and below make up at least 80% of Kenya's population. In the 2017 general election, those between 18 to 35 years made up 51% of the 19.6 million registered voters. Youth unemployment stands at 22.2%. With many young people unemployed, the critical crown they seek is not the one that sits on the heads of the anointed cultural leaders, but rather the one that covers their hunger for food and job opportunities. Melita, Oletenges, NTV.